determination, hard work, diligence, risk, fearless. Join us as Ed Foxworth talks with existing business owners, government, and community leaders to uncover what it takes to become an American entrepreneur. Hello and welcome to another edition of American Entrepreneur. I'm your host Ed Foxworth. On this show, we attempt to provide you with insight and examples of success in terms of owning and operating a small business. Today we're talking about the restaurant business. From full service dining to quick service drive throughs cafeterias, buffets, and snack bars, eating out is part of an economic growth industry. Driven by demographics, consumer taste, and personal income, differentiators include innovations in menu items, customer service, and dining concepts. Participating in this $400 billion per year industry is Maurice Wiggins, founder of the Hudson Cafe, who is looking to expand his brand as the economy seeks to rebound, making him this week's Entrepreneur in Focus. Mr. Wiggins, we're here today talking a little bit about the restaurant business. Tell me a little bit more about how you got started. You know what, I got started with restaurants when I was a kid. Uh, my grandfather uh, was a pastor, and so he had the church, and we had one of the largest churches in Detroit. We had a banquet facility. So my aunts, and my grandmother, and my mom, and everybody was always in there helping cook, and, and so I started paying attention to things. You know, I started seeing how they were doing things, and I started helping out, because as a PK, you gotta help. You gotta get in there, you gotta get to work and serve, and, and I just fell in love. I fell in love with people enjoying a great meal, and you know you had part in that. Now, you could have gone a number of different ways with that, but you decided to go into entrepreneurship. Why so? You know what? Uh, entrepreneurship was something that I didn't know a lot about. And when I went to college uh, on a football scholarship, uh, a lot of my professors were talking about entrepreneurship and it just kept sparking an interest in me and I just would sit after class and talk with my professors like you own your own business and you're a professor and how did you get into that and so I just was intrigued by being able to make my own hours uh, do my own thing but also offer jobs to people in such a tough time yeah now food and entrepreneurship can make for some really exciting kinds of things you started a restaurant actually as the founder of a restaurant called the Hudson Cafe. Tell us a little bit about the idea behind that. The idea behind the Hudson Cafe was, I knew originally what it was, it was a former restaurant. So I looked at this opportunity as taking this place and establishing it to be the destination place for breakfast and lunch. And that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to do dinner, I didn't want to do anything else. And so I went out, it was a dream uh, that I, I literally came up with the whole concept in a dream. And I went after it. And after I was involved with it and moving forward, I decided to grab some partners. Uh, and I did that. And now I decided that, you know, we all weren't going in the same direction. So, you know, not to talk about negativity things, it was time for me to pull myself away from that and know that if you can do this, you can do many, many more. And so now I'm ready and I'm on this thing where I'm going to open as many successful restaurants in downtown Detroit as I can. And I have several concepts. I have several celebrity chefs that want to work with me from all over, all different walks of life. And so we're going to bring some great things. You know, there is a renaissance taking place in Detroit. And as an entrepreneur, we could say, let's go into uh, beauty supply. Let's go and open up an ice cream parlor. Let's go and decide that we're just going to sell shoes. You're sticking to what you started with. And there's got to be a passion inside that drives you to want to do that. Tell us what it is that you are providing to Detroiters that makes you stay the course. What, what I'm providing to Detroit is job opportunity. When I opened the Hudson, I was able to offer 30 jobs to people right here in the city of Detroit. Now, I don't have as much money as Dan Gilbert yet. Keyword, yet. But I have the same passion, I have the same drive, and I love my city. I'm from here, I grew up on the east side, I went to Martin Luther King High School, I played ball, and I love downtown Detroit. I remember when I was a kid, and my grandfather would come down to Hot Sam's, and he would get his shoes, and he would get me one. And I have always loved downtown, and so we have to be ambassadors for our city. I'm not waiting to be elected 
for a council position. I'm not waiting to be elected uh, a mayor position. I'm doing my part as a citizen of, De of Michigan, of the United States, of Detroit, that I am going to help this downtown area come back. And I'm going to go after every developer, every person that owns a building, and I'm going to let you know. You're talking to one of the best restaurateurs that this city has ever seen. And I'm ready to just take it by storm. American Entrepreneur will return in a moment. Listen up. Each year, hundreds of promising research studies go on funded for breast cancer, for lung cancer, every cancer. The American Cancer Society has been behind nearly every breakthrough in recent history. But there's still more work to do. So let's make sure that no research is silenced. Let's make noise. Let's make noise. Yeah. And let's finish the fight. American Entrepreneur continues. You are working in an environment and, or, or in an industry that requires differentiation. Yes. Why should people come to your restaurant versus going to the Hudson Cafe or any other restaurant that they might see in the downtown Detroit area? Well, the thing is, is this, you gotta have great food. Okay, if your food is terrible, people are not coming back. They'll come the first time we first open just to see what it's all about. But once you have great food, once you have also uh, great staff and diversity, that's what I brought into the Hudson Cafe. I brought diversity. And Amore Cafe, International Cafe that I had at Fort Field, I had diversity. Everything that I do is going to be diversity. It's going to show you that it doesn't matter who you are. You could be purple. You could be the blue people on Avatar. You're going to be able to come in and enjoy a wonderful time, wonderful meal, and the price is going to be right. It's not going to guard your pockets. You're not going to feel like you left all your money at the table. But you're going to have a great time. You're going to come back and you're going to do the best promotion that there is, word of mouth. And you're going to tell somebody else about it. Let's go a little bit deeper and pull the pieces together for me, if you would. Okay. It's not as easy as waking up and deciding you want to go into business. <laughs> there are some roads and some trials and tribulations. Talk a little bit about that and what you might have to endure to get to this point. I tell you this, Ed, you have to first set some goals. You gotta have some goals. If you if, if you can't just wake up and say I want to do something, you gotta have some goals. Then you gotta have a business plan. You gotta put your ideas on paper. But you also have to change your surroundings. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, put yourself around successful entrepreneurs. Go to networking events. Meet people. Uh, talk. Don't be afraid to talk. And why? Why? Why go to other events? Tell me why should I go and meet with other people? Because you don't know who might be at that event that can help you get to where you just wrote that goal or that vision. You don't know who's there that's going to be like, you know what? I like what you're doing. I want to talk with you. And from there, you don't know that person could be a billionaire. That person could be a, a multi-millionaire. But they would want to tie with you to help bring your vision to pass because they're just a vision vision helpers as I said. There's vision seekers, vision helpers or vision ambassadors that will help bring your vision to pass. Talk to us a little bit about the vision of your business and where you, where things will be five years from now. And you're going to, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have a ton of no's, okay? And if you let each one of those no's stop you, you'll never make it. I'm just going to tell all the listeners, everybody that's going to be watching this, you're not gonna make it. You have to understand that no equals new opportunity. That's what you gotta understand. Very good. So you let the no turn into fuel to make you go after everything that you desire. Because you're gonna hear them. I've heard them, I still hear them. People are like, no, okay, not a problem. No means just not with you. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna be able to do it. Right. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna prove to you that I'm gonna make it happen. Stay tuned for more American Entrepreneur. But there's always been such a strong entrepreneurial spirit in the minority community. It's no more just having a degree. 
It's no more just finishing school or showing up at the job as a body. I'm a second generation business owner. My parents had a successful business in Augusta, Georgia. Entrepreneurship. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of events to go to, a lot of networking to attend. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, but everyone's not really willing to put the work in. And entrepreneurship is 24-7-365. It's time to put this work and these hours in for myself. Jobs are being outsourced. Um, people are not sure of their uh, you know, sustainable income. Uh, they're being challenged by, um, again, the changing technology and the, the, the workforce. Entrepreneurship to me opens up the doors where people thought the doors had been closed. If you're going to be in business, if you, that means that you're going to be a capitalist and an entrepreneur. That means you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to make money. How do you take charge of your own life? Entrepreneurship and business, to me, is more important today than any other time in, in, his, in the history of this country. Training thousands of aspiring entrepreneurs with the skills they need to create new startups. Helping small businesses expand and hire more workers. Mobilizing new investments and expanding access to capital. There's always a moment, the moment you decide to get involved, to get engaged. This is my American story. When you teach someone to read, they have a, a sense of self-fulfillment. Seeing family, friends fall victim to gang violence, drugs, it definitely made me want to serve. There was a hole in the ground, and by the time we left, there was a house. I realized that these kids were not getting a meal. It is so easy to give back. I don't have a lot of money to help people, but I do have something. I have time. You can give any skill you have. Get up and do something. Just imagine how strong a society we could be. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. And this message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Hello, friends. I'm concerned about the health of our African-American community. According to the American Heart Association, our rates of high blood pressure in the U.S. are among the highest in the world. And diabetes, obesity, high cholesterol, physical inactivity, poor nutrition and smoking are causing us to suffer and die from stroke at alarming rates. In 3 John 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Visit PowerToEndStroke.org and become empowered to take care of your health. You are the power to end stroke. We now continue with American Entrepreneur. So you have to be careful at your partner selection. Sure. You also have to be careful uh, who's over the money and who's doing what with bank accounts and things like that. Be very careful uh, when you're doing business. Uh, get to know the people that you're getting in bed with uh, because it's a marriage. When you do a partnership, it's a marriage. And so you're going to be with this person for as long as that lease is signed mm -hmm. unless you walk away from it. Um, and and the, so those are some of the things that, and, and you also deal with some things where you have to uh, understand that it might not take off right away. Okay, that's okay. It's okay. It might not take off all the way, but it can still be successful. You just got to keep working at it. Talk to me a little bit about mentorship or about someone in your life that inspired you to stick to your guns, to stay focused, and to think that you were capable of having the confidence to be in business for yourself. You know what? It's several people. Uh, first, my grandfather, Bishop Kenneth James Hope. Uh, from there, uh, my uncle Aaron Diller. Uh, from there, my mother, uh, one of the biggest fans uh, in my life, uh, you know, taught me how to play football and wrestle. Uh, my, my older brother, uh, he's a, a chef by just nature. He just had it. And if you had to pull out one of them, which one inspired you to, to say the course the most? I, I would say all of them, I couldn't really say the most. Okay. I gotta throw my wife in there also, because my wife, you know, by, by, or on side of every great man is a great woman. So without her, I wouldn't be able to even continue to do what I'm doing now. But out of all of them, I learned bits and pieces from each one of them. None of 
seventh was where I just took everything I just learned from different individuals and even uncles like Bishop William Abney, my pastor now, Pastor Spencer T. Ellis. I just learned different attributes that I just said, you know what, I like that about him. And I pulled it and I tell it together and that's Maurice Wiggins. Let's talk a little bit about vision. Now we're going forward. What kind of experience will people have when they walk into this new restaurant? What, what are you looking to be able to provide for them? I'm so glad you asked. You're going to feel like you just walked into a, a, a place where you're going to get a little bit of an old Detroit of what Broadway has to offer and you're going to get this bar experience and tables and it's going to be great lighting and it's going to be hardwood floors and you're going to walk in and you're just going to feel like wow I really like this place this is this is different it's cozy uh, but it's great uh, and you're going to see an open kitchen you're going to see guys walking around in their full chef attire and you're going to order stuff off this menu and I, and I, and I, and I don't want to give away any of the Great ideas we're gonna have on the menu, but right. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. Yeah. You're gonna love it. If you love the Hudson, and you love what I did over there, hey, don't wait to what I do over here. You're gonna love it. When you think about the city of Detroit, take us five years from now, and you're in that picture. What, what should people uh, think about? What are they gonna see? How are you gonna be able to make the kind of impact that you wanna make versus anybody else who's investing in the city? I'm gonna keep working hard. I'm gonna keep putting 150% uh, forward. I'm going to keep opening restaurants. Uh, five years from now, I'm hoping to have at least five uh, full service restaurants successfully operated and running in Detroit. And I know people get scared about that. I'm not trying to be someone that I'm not. I'm trying to open restaurants because we need great places. I get tired of people saying there's nowhere to eat if you go downtown. I, I, I get into an argument with people because I'm going to change that. When you say, okay, I'm downtown, where do I go to eat? You're going to go right off the top with five restaurants that Mr. Wiggins has opened or been a part of, and those are one of the ones you're going to go to. So five years from now, I want to have that. I want to have where I've helped people that have families that have been out of work, that have been laid off, that have been struggling. To, to meet needs that, that are using Marvin right now, you know, to cover their bills. That they say, this guy gave me an opportunity. I want managers that are working there, getting great pay, because I'm not trying to be somebody. I want to be in the background. I, I don't need to be out front. I just want to make it where the people are working, people are thriving, people are eating great. Everybody loves it. That's what I want to see. And five years now, who knows what happened? I might throw my hat in the political ring, I don't know. Uh, I want a book deal, I got a book deal, I, I'm trying to get, so you know, who knows, you know, the sky's the limit. As long as you stay positive, stay moving forward, and take those no's and turn them into new opportunities. Spoken like a true entrepreneur, how can people get in touch with you? What is the best way to become part of this whole vision that you have? People can get in touch with me anytime. Uh, International Hospitality Group is a company that I'm helping other entrepreneurs that want to open restaurants. If you want to open a restaurant, you want to open it downtown, you're successful, you're honest, you have integrity, enthusiasm, and you want to partner with me, my company will partner with you and we will help you open a restaurant. And that's the thing. We're not trying to be 100% owners in all five restaurants. We want to help people open them. So you can get in touch with me by phone, by email. My email is mdwiggins. That's M-D-W-I-G-G-I-N-S 4650 at sbcglobal.net. Well, we wish you all the best in all that you're doing, man. We're looking forward to the, your vision and all those restaurants opening up in the future. I appreciate that. You're a business owner. Yeah, where, where did that courage come from and what well, does it take? I, I did have to muster up some courage because it, it, it wasn't easy for me to do it because I had worked for other companies before, you know, I worked at, with other designers and other retailers and I worked for them and, and uh, just it just so happened I teamed up with some people who said, well, let's just do it, Mark, let's just try it. So a long, long time ago, we just tried it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once I tried it and once I tasted it, there's nothing like the taste. That's right. There's See now, right. like and you're, you're alluding to something that I wonder about in terms of fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because some people are afraid of taking that leap mm -hmm. and then not getting it right. And that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. part that's of part it. Of I the, mean, the development. And, and fear, fear is definitely part of it. Um, but what usually happens is you're so fearful at times. I remember when I, I finally went on my own, 
it was because I had tried it every other way. Mm -hmm. I had already worked for you know many banks and institutions. I had done the business their way. Mm -hmm. What was really holding me back? I was just not clear. I wasn't sure, is it gonna work? Am I gonna fall on my face? Are my friends gonna still be there? Am I gonna be able to make a living? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna be able to support my family? And those questions have to be answered. And then sometimes, you know what? Those questions have to be shelved. Mm -hmm. You have to put them away That's right. and just focus on what's in front of you, the opportunity, and go for it. Mm -hmm. What I've grown to learn is, is that every short putt doesn't go in the hole. So if you don't try, mm -hmm. you definitely won't win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I like that because I know I've heard Michael Jordan say some things like that too, that he, he missed every shot that he didn't take. That's you right. Know? Yeah. That's and right. so you've got to take the risk. You've got to jump Absolutely. out there. But are there some inherent barriers that people need to be prepared for? What do they need to kind of look forward to seeing and know that they're going to be there uh, as part of that whole endeavor? The fact that who they think is in business, who they think they're in business for may not want to do business with them. Uh, That's yeah. a reality. You will <laughs> you will encounter a lot of That's no right. thank yous or no's along the way. For me, it's every no is closer to my yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the one thing because sometimes we're so excited we've got the business plan and the business plan says that we're going to you know potentially do this in the first year second year third year and yet you get out there and, and it's time to execute that business plan and in the real world you find that getting to that first customer it seems like you know it's impossible yeah. so you got to be prepared for that you have to really have a stick and stay because who you think you're going to do business with may not be ready to do business with you, although you're ready to do business. Or you may find that who you went to business to service, they're they're there waiting for you to provide that service or product, but at the same time you discover there's another opportunity while you're doing business. Yeah. My business started out with a single focus of virtual human resource management services, which meant I was your human resource management function, your 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 senior VP, mm -hmm. your department, it grew now to include a comprehensive level of support services, and that was after servicing several clients just on the human resource management side, but then identifying other opportunities right. of needs that they had. So, so the idea is that you had to morph into really absolutely, and that wasn't was in the business plan. Needs. Yeah, that, that so had, you, you, there's some lonely nights, some crying times when you think that the that, that 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 this plan that you thought was going to blossom mm -hmm. doesn't actually blossom yeah. so I'm just wondering when it talks when you talk about that how that actually happens and how you how you muster up the the courage as we've been saying to keep going yeah well for me it's it's like being out in the ocean in the middle of the ocean mm -hmm. where you got to swim to shore and I've been out in the ocean quite a few times but I I'm all, always managed to swim to shore if you swim to shore and and made it safely before you can do it again so Absolutely. every time you bump your head or there's a wall, then those walls can be knocked down. They may not be knocked down today, but you know you've knocked them down before. You know, it's like being a fighter. Sure. It's like yeah. being a fighter. I've won fights before. Yeah. Right. So you have, to, you have to remember those successes that you had. That's right. Even if they weren't in the same arena that you're in now, mm -hmm. you know, you said that self-talk mm -hmm. or the destructive self-talk. And, and that's, that's really it. I, I heard this saying the other day, uh, I'm not going to be the champ you want me to be. I'm going to be my champ, the champ that I want to be. Yeah. And I think that we have to remember that you succeeded in something before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even for those who really think they haven't. Find something positive that you can say, you know what, I did that successfully. And remember what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, then you know what, you need to find a group of people that you can surround yourself with and figure out ways of achieving the goals or, the, right. or, or the, the milestones that you have to reach. Make sure that you know you can dialogue with people um, who have been to the mountaintop, right. who have had success, yeah. and they can maybe impart some of those things onto you. Yeah, and we have so many people who are you know, unemployed and kind of having pity parties and not real <laughs> sure about what tomorrow brings. If you each, and I'll just go around okay. and have one tip that number one tip of advice that you would share with entrepreneurs today uh, in terms of dealing with barriers, finding the courage, overcoming fears, what would that one tip be? I would say remember your why. Why you went into business to start. Okay. And keep that in front of you. For me, it was a no-brainer. I mean, there was, 
you know, we're talking uh, post 9-11 being laid off with 38,000 contractors from one of the major automotive manufacturers and there were 38,000 people sitting in the population, the, the, the marketplace that were not being absorbed by 38,000 openings. Mm -hmm. So being a divorcee, two little boys at the time and all these you know, adult responsibilities, unemployment could not afford me and it wasn't because of my it wasn't because of my <laughs> like budget. That. Unemployment couldn't afford it you. It couldn't afford me. And it wasn't because of my lifestyle. It, mm. it, and I knew that I had something that I wanted to continue to pour into an organization. So you have to, and then I had children. I had mm. children. So I saw all these whys as why I need to keep pressing on even before my first customer came along. So you got to keep the whys in front of you. And I'm not going to tell you that fear wasn't still there. Fear was there. Mm -hmm. Fear was definitely there and competing with the whys. So you have to decide which one you're going to let rule you. Okay, good. The whys. Mark? You know, I say it's fashion for me. And, you know, I, I get a lot of interns come in and they work with us, you know, on the design side of it and the retail side of it. And I always say it's passion for me. And, and if your passion is there, make sure that, that that you pick the right one. That's really your passion, not my passion or not Puff Daddy's passion or, or Russell Simmons. Be your own and make sure that that's what you want and you can hang in there. Because if, if it's not real, if it's just for the glam of the fashion part of it, and I get that a lot, a lot, whole lot of that, because they'll see what we've done uh, in the fashion world, or what, see what we, we put on the runway and say, oh, I could do that. But you didn't see what we did to we get did to that. the runway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we ha how we had to make people look a certain way and walk a certain way. And, and in, 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 the, in the, the industry, you have to be able to talk and walk. You know, so we get models that only can walk, maybe. Can't talk. Well, you're not gonna <laughs> get a lot of work. You gotta be able to talk too. Some can talk but can't walk. So it's it's a it's a, today is a whole complete package. So so what I do is not just fashion, you know. It's about a passion. It's is a passion. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I would say fail fast so you can succeed. A lot of times you, you have to get that thing, that fear mm -hmm. behind you. Mm -hmm. And you can't get something behind you unless you either go through it or over it or around it. But the truth is you're really gonna have to go right through it. Mm -hmm. And that is whatever that fear is, if it's failing, go ahead and fail fast. You're gonna learn something when you fail, okay? You're gonna learn how to get back up. You're gonna learn where, where you could have avoided a step here or there. Uh, and then you'll begin to build positive steps, you know, to, to succeed. Yeah. So fail fast. Fail fast so you can yeah. succeed sooner. So that That's you can right. succeed. Right. Right. The why, the passion, and fail fast. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Absolutely. Right. Well, that's it for now. I hope we provided some insight on another component of the entrepreneurial experience. Now we want to hear from you. Share your comments about the show or tell us why you are an American entrepreneur by sending your emails to myamericanentrepreneur at gmail.com. We just might use your comment on an upcoming show. I'm your host, Ed Foxworth, and until next time, remember to decide, believe, and pursue.